His latest article is headlined, The West's False Narrative About Russia and China. The relentless Western narrative that the West is noble while Russia and China are evil is simple-minded and extraordinarily dangerous, Jeffrey Sachs writes. The main point, Amy, is that we are not using diplomacy. We are using weaponry. Uh, this uh, sale now announced to Taiwan that you've been discussing this morning is just another case in point. 30 years ago, the Soviet Union ended and some American leaders got it into their head that there was now what they called the unipolar world, that the U.S. was the sole superpower and we could run the show. The results have been disastrous. We have had now three decades of militarization of American foreign policy. A new database that Tufts is maintaining has just shown that there have been more than 100 military interventions by the United States since 1991. We go to war when we want, where we want, whether it was Afghanistan or Iraq or the covert war against Assad in Syria, which is even today not properly understood by the American people, or the war in Libya. And we say, we're peace loving. What's wrong with Russia and China? They are so warlike. They're out to undermine the world. And we end up in terrible confrontations. The war in Ukraine, just to finish the, the uh, introductory uh, view, could have been avoided and should have been avoided through diplomacy. What President Putin of Russia was saying for years was do not expand NATO into the Black Sea, not to Ukraine, much less to Georgia, which if people look on the map, straight across to the eastern edge of the Black Sea. Russia said this will surround us, this will jeopardize our security, let us have diplomacy. The United States rejected all diplomacy. I tried to contact the White House at the end of 2021. In fact, I did contact the White House and said, there will be war unless the US enters diplomatic talks with President Putin over this question of NATO enlargement. I was told the US will never do that. That is off the table. And it was off the table. Now we have a war that's extraordinarily dangerous, and we are taking exactly the same tactics in East Asia that led to the war in Ukraine. We're organizing alliances, building up weaponry, uh, trash talking China, uh, having Speaker Pelosi fly to uh, Taiwan when the Chinese government said, please lower the temperature lower the tensions. We say, no, we do what we want and now send more arms. This is a recipe for yet another war. And to my mind, it's terrifying. We are at the 60th anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis, which I've studied all my life and I've written about, I've written a book about the aftermath. We are driving to the precipice and we are uh, filled with our, uh, our enthusiasm as we do so. And it's just uh, unaccountably uh, dangerous and uh, wrongheaded, the whole approach of uh, US foreign policy and it's bipartisan. The knowledge and possibility of decent lives is spreading throughout the whole world. But in the United States, there's a resentment to this a deep resentment. I think there's also a tremendous historical ignorance because uh, I think a lot of U.S. leaders have no clue as to modern history, but they resent China's rise. That is an affront to the United States. How dare China rise? This is our world. This is our century. And so starting around 2014, I saw step by step, I watched it, it within hence uh, uh, detail because it's it's my daily activity how the united states recast china not as a uh, country that was uh, recovering from uh, a century and a half of uh, 
great difficulty, but rather as an enemy. And we consciously, as a matter of American foreign policy, started to say we need to contain China. China's rise is no longer in our interest, as if the United States is to determine whether China is prosperous or not. The Chinese are not naive. In fact, they're extraordinarily sophisticated. This is a Western world. We are the G7. We get to determine who writes the rules of the game. Uh, Indeed, Obama said, uh, let's write the rules of trade for Asia, but not have China uh, write uh, any of those rules. The U.S. will write the rules. This is a this is a, a an incredibly naive and dangerous an outmoded way to uh, understand the world. We in the United States are 4.2% of the world's population. We do not run the world. We are not world leader. We are a country of 4.2% of the people in a big, diverse world, and we should learn to get along.